Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Wild Yoga Tribe podcast. I'm your host, Lily Allen Duenas. Together, we'll talk about the world of yoga and we'll talk to people from around the world. Join us for authentic conversations about the global yoga ecosystem and we'll cover yoga philosophies and methodologies along the way. Inhale, exhale. We're about to dive in. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Wild Yoga Tribe podcast. Today, I have Ayn Latonio joining me from Cebu, which is in the Philippines. Ayn and I met uh, back in, I think it was 2019, maybe, or 18 in Rishikesh in India. And we attended some Hatha yoga courses with Surinder Singh, uh, a really phenomenal yoga teacher in India. So I'm really happy to have Ayn Latonio on with me today. He is a registered nurse by profession and a self-proclaimed forever student of yoga. He's been practicing yoga for seven years and has been teaching for five years. Years. After his first 200-hour yoga teacher training in Rishikesh, he's continued to deepen his yoga practice by studying with teachers who are firmly rooted in the tradition of yoga. I'm so happy to have Ayn with me today. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you, Lily. It's a pleasure to be here. Good to see you again or hear you again. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Hearing. Uh, I love that podcast. Um, yeah. It just helps to bring people together from all around the world. Uh, the I know we're all a little tired of Zoom or of the digital world, but it certainly has helped bridge the gaps. So I wanted to start off just talking to you a little bit, Ayn, about how you got started doing yoga. Like what first turned you on to yoga? So as soon as I graduated, I had to find a way to keep myself fit after I sort of semi-retired from competitive basketball. And so I went back to the gym, uh, lifted some weights, uh, like what we normally do as athletes. And um, I used to lift weights just every other day and do cardio every other day as well. So I did it alternately. And... It just so happened that my training partner at that time was the yoga teacher for that gym. And so he was like, oh, since it's your cardio day, why don't you join me for a yoga session? And I was hesitant at first because it was all like 40-something women, all women, all in their 40s, maybe 50s for some. And I was really hesitant. I was like, I don't know if I can do that. But long story short, I went and um, second down dog of the class, and I was already sweating so bad. And I was like, okay, this is not easy at all. And um, a few days later, I went back to the class, and then I, I went back three times a week. And it just it just went on until I met this teacher, this Indian teacher who was based here in Cebu at that time. His name's Veer. Shout out to Veer, my teacher, one of my first teachers. He's, he's back in India now. And it was with him that I got introduced to the deeper aspects of yoga, to pranayam, to the other limbs, to meditation, to the yama niyamas as well. And it was... At this point, that I noticed how yoga is very much similar to modern medicine. And I got very interested in this. It, it, it's like modern medicine, but in a different language. And so this is what drew me in even more in the practice. So as soon as my teacher Veer left for India, I was looking for other teachers who can teach me those aspects of yoga that's beyond asan. And so I went to India and did my first 200-hour teacher training. And, you know, they say the rest is history. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Uh, The rest is history. That is how it works with yoga when you fall in love with it and when you find the right teacher. It sounds so lucky that you met Veer 
in Cebu. Was was he there for a long time or just a month or two? Yeah, he was here for quite some time. I studied with him for almost two years, if I remember that right. So I I was introduced to yoga and or to yoga with with Alex, my very first teacher. And about a month later, I met Veer. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And something I've always admired about you is I feel like you do such a wonderful job of seeking out the right teachers or the teachers that you feel really resonate with you and with what you're seeking to learn on the the path of yoga. Um, How do you go about finding these teachers or do you think it's been a lot of serendipity? Uh, I think it's the latter. <laughs> it's serendipity, and at the same time, it's it's about seeking as well. You know, it's it's a lot about seeking, and it's about reinforcing the knowledge, the the foundational knowledge that that you've acquired throughout the years of practice. Like for example, I came to know about Ramaswamy Sir, my my teacher now, Srivasta Ramaswamy Ruvir. Because at that time, as soon as I finished my 200-hour training, I went to Rota, where Veer is based now. And he, was, he just finished his training with Ramaswamy as well. And he was like, uh, I highly recommend this teacher. He's the longest standing student of Krishnamacharya. And so I made it a mission, a goal of mine to study with Ramaswamy as well. And for Gokula Chandra, my other teacher of Gokul Yoga, uh, I was looking for teachers who taught bandhas because Veer taught bandhas so much. And that's how I got introduced to bandhas as well. And I searched for teachers who taught bandhas and I found first uh, Simon Borg Olivier, Simon Synergy of Synergy Yoga. And the second one is Gokula Chandra of Gokul Yoga. And it just so happened that uh, I think that was around 2018 when Gokula Chandra had a 50-hour training in Singapore. And that was the most accessible for me in terms of location. So I went and I studied with him and I got way more than binders. I learned Bhakti Yoga from him and so many other things. Wow, that does sound like an incredible experience. And I do want to, for the listeners who don't know what bandhas are, just explain that those are these internal energy locks. Do you want to talk a little bit more, Ayn, about why you were so um, adamant about seeking out a teacher to teach you about bandhas? I started off like everyone. It was all about the asans. It was all about the strengthening, it was all about the, the flexibility, it was all about the physical practice for me, just like I think everyone. And um, so when I got introduced to this banda, it just changed my physical, at that point, my physical practice so much. It made it, it made so many postures more accessible for me than just going to these poses without using the bandhas, just just using brute force and just just using mindless effort, so to say. But when I got introduced to these bandhas, the more subtle practices of yoga, the postures became easier and I became more relaxed in these postures. And, you know, isn't that what postures are supposed to be? You know, sthira, sukham, asana, comfortable and a, a relaxed posture, you know? So as, the more I studied about these, the more yoga as a whole became accessible to me, not just the physical practice, but it, it drew my attention inward even more than just, you know, doing all these postures, doing the arm balances, doing the inversion. It made these postures more not just accessible, but it made more sense. It allowed me to use these postures to understand my mind as well, to understand my thoughts. Mm, I love that. The, the power of 
when we kind of let go of just obsessing over the physical practice, as I love you said, Ayn, that everyone kind of comes to yoga for that. That is the attractive element usually, or the introductory element. We could say that as well. It's what people see and are curious about. Um, They might see it on social media or see it offered at a yoga studio down the street. And that I think is a lot more approachable as the first gateway into yoga. Um, Because if you see someone doing pranayama, you might be a a little bit less, less, um, less curious, a little bit more like, Oh, what, why are they doing that to their nose? And it's maybe a little less, I don't want to use the word sexy, but you know, I think the the physical element of yoga asana practice is the, usually the gateway. Um, and I do want to say, I'm glad that you quoted the stira sukha asanam. I wanted to define that for our listeners too, that stira means strong and steady, stable, and sukha can translate to sweet or to happy, relaxed. And asanam, of course, is the physical practice of yoga. So yoga is this practice, physical practice, um, the asana practice should be both strong, steady, stable, as well as comfortable with the sweetness element in the poses. So it sounds like Ayn that bandhas was kind of the key for you to really get into the poses in a whole new way. Am I, am I right in that? Exactly. Yes. That's amazing. I I don't do bandhas super often. I feel like I'm conscious of them in certain poses, but certainly not in every pose. Do you feel like in nearly every pose, your first um, kind of gut reaction is towards the bandha before the movement? Huh. That's a hard one. Um, It it, it almost goes simultaneously, the posture and the bandha. So it's like, the posture itself activates it. At the same time, when you use the banda, it becomes a posture through this, again, going back to Spira Sukha Asana. So it's, it's basically like, you know, having to connect this gross practice, this gross physical practice, and the more subtle mental practice of yoga, if, if I'm making sense. Um, I don't know if I'm making sense right now, but um, again, it's it's like they go hand in hand. I, I can't say that, I, okay, I think about the bandhas first and then I do the posture or I go into the posture first and then I do the bandhas. It, it, it's almost automatic when, you know, when you start this practice and when you, when you move with intent, when, when you move with more awareness, they, they almost go together. I think you're absolutely correct with that. You're right. When After a time of practicing bandhas and asana, the mind can kind of take the back seat and things can happen more fluidly, simultaneously, as you said. So um, that is a, you made perfect sense. No, no worries there. So as I talked about your teachers and how I admire you always seek out to study with the ones um, that you feel are most aligned and rooted with the authentic yoga tradition, what do you think is a good tool for someone who's looking to find the right teacher? Do you recommend certain uh, websites? Um, Of course, certain teachers, I'm sure your teachers, and I'd love to link to those in the show notes for everyone who's listening. I'm happy to provide um, with Ayn's help all of the correct links so you can get in touch or or learn more about the teachers he's studying with. But Ayn, do you have any recommendations for people looking for the right teachers? The first recommendation I would say is to find their own practice first. Because there are a lot of different methods of yoga out there. I'm not saying one is better than the other. It's just which one resonates with you. And it took me, you know, for some, it will take some a year to find their practice. For some, it takes 10 years to find their practice. You know, you can jump from one method, one approach to the other before you actually find your practice. But for me, it took me around three years to find that practice. So when I did my first teacher training in Rishikesh, it was like an overview. It was like an overview of yoga beyond the asanas. And after that, I just continued to speak. And I, I, I explored different practices, different methods as well. 
until I found these teachers and the ones that I resonated with. You know, we have so many tools right now. We have the internet. It's just a matter of which ones you reinforce, which ones you actually see. So first you discover which one you want to practice. And then from there, you build from that. That's where you, you start. It's, it's like the first step. And then from there, you have the internet. You can continue to seek, oh, who, who are these teachers right now who are teaching this style of yoga that I want to learn? And then you just keep on going from there. Um, the connections are endless. You'll meet so many people from different parts of the world who are seeking the same, who are on the same path as you are. And from there, it's, it's, it's easy. It's easy from there. It's like, it's like you just take the first step. You just take the first step, find out which one's for you, find out which one resonates with you. And then from there, it's easy. It's smooth. It's downhill from there. I love that. You're right. It, it starts with you. It starts with your journey and where you're at and what you're seeking. It's all highly individual. So that is completely correct uh, that we should start with ourselves and then move outward, finding the right teachers um, that resonates with what we want to study and in what type of methodology, philosophy, uh, tradition, and path that might be. Um, and in terms of the methodologies you're referencing, Ayn, uh, the variety of them, are you speaking more towards Anasura yoga versus Hatha yoga versus, um, you know, Bhakti yoga? I mean, are you kind of going more, you could be studying Iyengar, is it more the physical or is there different methodologies of yoga that you're, you're referring to here? Yeah, I, I think it's, it's, to be more relatable to everyone, it's, it, it always starts with the physical practice, you know, the different styles of yoga. You have Aingar yoga, you have Ashtanga vinyasa, you have vinyasa. You have so many different styles of yoga nowadays. And again, most of these are classified according to the physical practice, to the different ways of teaching the physical practice. But then again, whichever resonates at some point, you'll have to ask yourself, why am I doing all this? What's the point of doing all this? And then from there, as they say, I'd like to go, I can't remember who said it, but as they say, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And when the student is truly ready, the teacher disappears. And that's one of my favorite quotes in, in yoga. And yeah, I think it's, it's, as I've said, it's downhill from there once you find what you really want. Once you know what you really want to establish your own practice, everything just flows. That's the way energy works. It's when you're ready and when you're calling for it, it's manifesting and it comes to you. I definitely believe in that. So I know we talked a little bit about yoga around the world and um, the different the difference is there, but could you tell us a little bit what yoga is like in the Philippines? Is it popular? Is it all over all of the islands? Um, or is it, um, you know, a lot of more retreat based? Uh, I would just love to hear a little bit more about yoga in the Philippines. Yes. Um, in the Philippines, I would say yoga is very much young. I think that's the best word to describe it. It's very much young. People are slowly getting into it. And, um, of course, again, going back, we always start with a physical practice. And people are starting to, to find the benefits or to experience the benefits of the physical practice of yoga. And then some of the students, some, some of the teachers, some of the people who start practicing yoga also start to see the deeper aspects of yoga but then again i'm going to say yoga in the philippines is quite young in terms of that in terms of going really deep into the practice but i'm very happy that more and more and more people are going deep into yoga right now and these people are also you know it's, it's by word of mouth that, that yoga has become so popular here in the philippines they're like oh I did yoga once and it, it felt so good. And then they tell their friends, their friends tell their friends as well. And 
it's growing. It's it's growing really fast right now, and I'm hoping that people will start to see yoga for what it is and start to practice yoga beyond just a, the asanas, beyond just the physical practice. Yes, beyond just the physical practice. I know you are also very into pranayama. I, do you want to talk to our listeners a little bit about pranayama? Uh, yes. Pranayama, this is probably one of the biggest parts of my practice. Um, it takes at least half of the time. Or how much time I practice is half of it is spent on pranayama. And um, basically, it's just breathing. Breathing techniques, uh, I'm not going to go deep into you know the philosophy of pranayama. Basically, it's just breathing techniques. And um, of course, it's more than that. But again, as soon as you see the benefit, you know, people are not addicted to perfection. People are, are, are more drawn to progress. And as a nurse, we're taught about different aspects of health. There's physical health. There's emotional health. There's mental health. There's spiritual health. And all of these, all of these are addressed through pranayama. Through breathing, just the simple action of breathing properly, of breathing right, is life-changing to say the least. When I started to practice and when I started to learn to incorporate proper breathing into the practice, and not just I'm not just talking about practice on the mat, when I took this practice, this breathing, this conscious breathing off the mat. I had more control over my emotions. I had more control over over my thoughts. I had more control over my actions. And everything just made sense. Because if you think about it, going back, if you think about it, wherever you go, when you're in distress, the First thing, the very first thing, even in the hospital, even in emergency situations, the very first thing that doctors or emergency responders tell you is to breathe deep. But the problem is people nowadays don't know how to breathe deep. You know, we think about breathing deep as just, you know, taking a full breath, like for one or two seconds, uh, lifting our chest up, lifting our shoulders up. When we start to breathe consciously, when we start to breathe deep into our belly, when we start to use all lobes of our lungs, physical health is addressed. We get proper oxygenation in our bodies as well as mental health. If you notice, when we start to breathe consciously, when we start to breathe slow, the mind calms down as well. And I think for me personally, this is my biggest takeaway for the yoga practice. Just this action, this act of conscious breathing, it has brought so much peace. Not just cleansing my body of of any discomfort of any or any disease that I might have, because I truly believe that through proper breathing, lots of diseases can be addressed. At the same time, this peace of mind, it's, it's just invaluable. Having a peace of mind is something that you can't put any value on. So as soon as you start to take control of your breath, you start to take control of your mind as well. And when your mind is under control, everything else follows. Your emotions your physical body, it starts to fix itself, but everything starts from the mind. And in order for us to control this mind, it always starts with the breath. And this is where pranayama comes in. There are so many different pranayama techniques out there, but then again, just this simple act of breathing consciously, it opens up a different world so when you start to breathe consciously, 
and you start to take control of your breath and you start to take control of your mind, everything just becomes so peaceful. Everything's at peace. Your mind is at peace. Your body is at peace as well. So even before you start to learn this more, say, specialized pranayama technique, again, this action of just consciously breathing it opens up a world of wonder. That's, that's just the easiest way to say it for now. It opens up a world of wonders where you have complete control over your mind, over your body, over your emotions, and then you radiate whatever peace you have to your friends, to your family, and to pretty much everyone you meet. Mm. You spoke so beautifully, Ayn, and with so much passion and just authentic love for pranayama. It was really wonderful to witness that uh, connection you feel to pranayama. And I agree with you that the breath is the bridge. It's the bridge between the mind, the body, the spirit. It is how we align everything together because the breath isn't in the past. It's not in the future. It's always in the present. And it's the supreme example of uh, the changing nature of our, our lives and of existence. And I think that you're right when you start to touch into the breath and uh, really breathe correctly and breathe intentionally. That is an incredible way to connect with um, your mind and and more having more control of it, which, as you said, is invaluable. Inner peace is absolutely invaluable. No price tag. Nothing is more worth uh, worthy, right? Than than inner peace. Uh, so it does sound like yoga and pranayama and bandhas have had an incredible impact on your life. Uh, would you like to talk a little bit about? the changes and the impact that yoga has caused in your life? Wow. Yeah. Um, I don't know where to start. <laughs> it, it just turned my life around. Again, as I've mentioned, um, for less, as I've mentioned, it's life changing to say the least. Um, as soon as I learned this, these techniques and especially again, to control the breath, I'm always going to go back to this. Everything's just so peaceful. When you start to feel that peace within yourself, again, going back, you can easily radiate this peace to everyone and to everything else in this world. Again, when we start to take control of our emotions, I, I think this is, again, the best lesson I've learned in yoga is to be able to control, not to control stress, because again, stress is always there and it triggers you in so many different ways. But the way we act, the way we react to this stress, to these stressors, is up to us. It's under our control. And to have a sound mind, a sound mind that is dictated, that is controlled by proper breathing, by relaxed breathing, to have a sound mind to react to this stress is just, it's the best thing that can happen to you. Just to get to that point where you can tell yourself to stop, to pause, to breathe, and then to react. It's going to change your life. Because then you're not reacting out of impulse. You're reacting out of wisdom. And this wisdom comes from a peaceful mind. Otherwise, your wisdom, whatever your whatever you think is the right thing to do can be clouded once you act out of impulse, especially when the stress blindsides you and you, the stress comes when you least expect it. 
sometimes we just react out of impulse. We go into a road rage. You know, we, we do so many different things that we might regret later. But then again, through this control, through the practice of yoga, we practice it every single day. And even when we're doing asana, the teacher always reminds us, all right, inhale, lift your hands up. It always starts with the breath and ends with the breath. And at that point, we're already training our mind to breathe consciously, to watch the breath, and then we can take our practice off the mat. And then, again, going back, we can react to stress with wisdom and not with impulse. That's the goal. I agree. That's the goal, to react not out of impulse but from wisdom. And I am so grateful that you pointed out, Ayn, that the stress is always there. The stressors will always be there. I think there can be some misconception that, you know, yogis or gurus or monks, oh, they have no stress. Uh, Of course, they're that peaceful. Life is very easy or whatever they're thinking there. But the stress never goes away. And yoga and these spiritual paths, it's not about avoiding the stress, escaping the feelings, running away. uh, uh, What's the word I want to find? It's pushing down, suppressing. That's it. It's not about suppressing the experience of the human experience. It is not about suppressing the human experience. It is about allowing all that arises to be there, but not to resist them with so much force that we're causing this internal and and external chaos for ourselves and for those around us. Um, I love that we, we've been talking a lot about the gifts that yoga gives for the ability to, to pause and be intentional and aware of how we interact and react with the world. Yeah, definitely. Wonderful. So, Ayn, would you do me the honor of filling in the blank? Uh, I'm going to give you two words, and I want you to finish the sentence Yoga is... Wow, how much time do I have to think for this? (laughs) You caught me off guard with that. (laughs) Okay. Yoga is loving kindness. Nothing more, nothing less. Loving kindness yourself loving kindness to others. And through that, there's peace within, there's peace without. That was lovely, Ayn. That was really a beautiful definition. I, I think that you're right about the, the self-love, the cosmic love, the love for all beings um, that are a part of us, just like the drop in the ocean or the sun ray and the sun. It's not separate. I think that that union that yoga teaches us is really precious. Well, thank you, Ayn, so much for being with us today on the Wild Yoga Tribe podcast. It's been a joy to reconnect with you and to get to dive deeper into your journey and your teachers and your practices. And I feel so grateful that you spent this time with me today. Thank you so much, Lily. And it's good to hear from you again. It's pleasure. It's been a pleasure to be here with Wild Yoga. Um, Yeah, I hope to hear from you again soon. I'll be keeping in touch as well, and I'll be listening to your podcast. I'm going to be a regular now. (laughs) Thank you. And so if any of our listeners today want to get in touch with you or take a yoga class with you, how can they get in touch? Where are you at online? All right. So to be honest, I'm on teaching break right now to focus in my own practice, on my personal practice. But yeah, maybe one day soon. I don't know when I'm going to go back to teaching. But if any of you guys have any questions at all about yoga and about the practice and about Vinyasa Krama, which is what my practice is right now, uh, please feel free. Hit me up on Instagram, 
It's I'm A Y M underscore seven. Or you can follow my Vinyasa Krama account, Vinyasa Krama Yoga Philippines on Instagram. And yeah, you can just send me your questions there. I'd be glad to answer them. Uh, if you have any questions about uh, finding the right teacher or where you want to start in your yoga journey, please, please don't hesitate. I'd be glad to answer them as well. This is my advocacy to, to get more people to practice yoga since I myself and many other people, I'm sure, can actually attest to the benefits of yoga. And I want you to, to experience the benefits of yoga as well as we did, as we had, and as we continue to experience in our lives. So again, please, please don't hesitate. Send me a message. I'd be glad to answer them. That's wonderful, Ayn. And yeah, we are recording this at the end of June 2021. So if uh, you're listening in further on in the year or later on in life, of course, these stay live forever and ever. I'm sure that you can reach out to Ayn to inquire about his uh, yoga classes or pranayama classes or other offerings he has, because I'm sure that this teaching break, which is so integral for all teachers to take. We, we all do take um, periods of time where we just need to go and be the student again. We're always students as, as you are, our dear listeners. Um, so just reach out about his offerings on Instagram. Um, he has two accounts. I'll link here in the show notes, but he's a wonderful teacher and I'm sure you can gather from this episode um, a beautiful soul. So I really hope that you do reach out to Ayn and tap into the amazing knowledge and passion he has for this practice. So thank you again, Ayn, for being with me here on the Wild Yoga Tribe podcast. Thank you, Lily. Thank you, Wild Yoga. I'll see you all soon. Bye. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in to this episode of the Wild Yoga Tribe podcast. Join me next Friday for an incredible interview again with another yoga teacher from somewhere around the world. Where will it be? Where are we going next? You're going to have to tune in next week to find out. Thank you again for being with me and be well. Remember to hit subscribe so that you never miss an episode. And if you feel called, please share this episode with someone that you think could benefit from it. Leaving a review would also be so appreciated. If you're on social media, I am there too at the Wild Yoga Tribe. You can tap into all the amazing resources on my website, thewildyogatribe.com, and you can meditate with me on Insight Timer and get your flow on with me on my YouTube channel where I've recorded free yoga classes. If you would like to schedule a private yoga or meditation class with me or a coaching session, you can find the link to do so to book in the show notes or on my website, again, thewildyogatribe.com. Thank you once again, dear listener, for being with me. May your day be light and bright. May you be peaceful and happy and led on the right path, free of suffering and free of sorrow. Be well, dear one. Be well. Be well.